Just tap it right here. A little bit harder. Ah! We have a floor model. We can offer deep discounts on our floor models. <laughs> With over 700,000 miles of highway, Texas has more room to roam than anywhere in America. Today, we are on a quest for creative expression through the largest gallery in America. This is All Roads Lead to Texas, deep in the art of the Lone Star State. When you think about Texas, art might not be the first thing that comes to mind, but Texas has this incredible, very unique, very Texas art scene. It's a little bit like a Stonehenge, you know. I don't think I ever really decided to build this. I've just been building sculptures in the backyard since I was a kid. It's kind of like a little shop of horrors, you know, feed me. I've been working on this since uh, 1989. It started with some individual freestanding sculptures like this one. Was it always a cathedral? My mom was the one that started calling it the Cathedral of Junk, and then that stuck like glue. Do you have priests, and are there others in your order? I'm junk. actually the Junk King. I always wanted to do something, you know, I wanted to find my own niche. That's the yeah. secret of success. Free stuff, and you know, once I hit on junk, there was no going back. Like, this brass bit, people give me stuff like that. That's like, to me, that's like treasure. This is people art here, right? Which is folk art, right? It's yeah. spontaneous. And the price is right. The Cathedral of Junk is the best three-story junk tower you will ever see in your entire life. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you can truly make art out of anything. You can make it out of junk, or in the case of this next artist, you can make it out of light itself. I came to Rice in 2015 to oversee public art. I don't know if you made this hill, but like, it's yeah. quite a project. James Terrell is my favorite living artist, and so I'm pretty excited. The idea was to bring a major work of public art to the university that would be free and open to all. I'm ready to just soak it in. You watch as both the light sequence comes on and the exterior world changes. In some ways, what's here is a very fancy frame. And what's in the frame is beyond the artist's control, but that's like the entire kind of point of it. I really do feel like I had a small psychedelic trip there. I sort of let everything kind of... It changes how you see. There are a ton of artists that choose this area to be their home. I'm at Wimberley Glassworks in the hot shop, and we're making a little vase. Glass is the ultimate expressive tool. You've been told your whole life never to touch this. Stuff. Don't touch it, it's glass. But here I get to work with this material that is always moving. It's elastic yet not. It's crazy to like just grab and yeah. pull glass. I really like to watch people's faces. They've never seen it done before. I feel like it's going to be harder than it. <laughs> Lift it up and get the tip high like this. Come on. Make sure everyone can smell your armpits. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's a challenging medium. It's hot, it's dangerous. Once you pick it up and start, you can't put it down. You have to be with it all the time. I chose glass because I'm fascinated with light. There's a huge difference between the days where you really feel connected to the material and the days that you don't feel connected to the material. You absolutely have to pour your heart and soul into every piece you make. It doesn't matter what your medium is. It can be hot molten glass. It can be light and the sky. It can be trash itself. You can make art out of whatever you find. And you find it everywhere here in Texas.